see, the other day I was talking with some people. And we were talking about how in sports, in a lot of sports, one team is trying to steal the signals from the other team. For example, in baseball or football, the opposing team is often trying to steal the signals that are being sent into the game. Because if you can steal the signals, you can get a great advantage. You can get a great advantage. While I was thinking about this, this verse from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 12 came to mind. And it's the king of Aram. He keeps planning these ambushes or attacks against Israel. And Elisha, the prophet, keeps telling the king of Israel, hey, here's what's going to happen. Don't go to such and place, such and such place, because they're set up, setting up an ambush for you. And so he's always a step ahead. He's stealing the signals. He knows what's coming. And, and one of the people I was talking with was talking about how even in, I think it was World War II, that one of the reasons why the United States and, and that side won the war is that they were able to steal the signals of the enemy. And then it says this in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 12. It says, none of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers when he's asking, who, who's, who's given this information away? But Elisha, the prophet who's in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words that you speak in your bedroom. Elisha's getting this insider information. He's stealing the signal. Somehow he's getting the message. I think it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Solomon says something like, be careful what you speak. Because a little bird might carry it off and carry that information somewhere. I'm just thinking about how powerful God is. And how he has just some amazing ways of protecting us, showing us what's coming up in our life. I'm thinking of, uh, I think it was Elijah or Elijah. He told uh, one of the women to, to leave the country and go off, I believe it was, to Egypt because a famine was coming in the land. He saved her. He preserved her. I'm thinking about when Jesus was a baby. How often did God show up in a, a dream or a vision to Joseph? Usually it was Joseph. And warn him of something that was coming and they would go a different route or they would go a different direction. They would go to Egypt. I'm thinking about how the Apostle Paul, God would appear to him and say, hey, don't go this direction. Don't go that way. And just God had a way of stealing the signals of the enemy and just knowing what their plans were and redirecting his people, protecting them in supernatural ways. It's just amazing to think about. And so we're going to get started with our daily prayer, and then we're going to take communion over this just as a time of gratitude. That God has amazing ways of watching out for us, protecting us, keeping us from things. Let's get started with the daily prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening. Their families, their friends, everybody connected to them. And all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light. Into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down. He was smitten. Bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side. That you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead. And you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ. 
and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm thinking about right now, I got a, we got a new book coming out very soon. I actually got the proof copy today as I'm recording this. The book's going to be coming out sometime in the next week, more than likely. And one of the concepts, the book's called Make Today a Masterpiece. One of the concepts in that book is that all throughout the day, keep reminding yourself, God's with me, he loves me, and nothing's impossible for him. And just keep reminding yourself of those three things. God's with me, he loves me, and nothing's impossible for him. He's got these amazing ways that he can prosper us, he can protect us, he can do good things for us. He's with me, he loves me, nothing's impossible for him. And so, Father, we just thank you for that. That you are with us, you are fighting for us, you are working for our good. We've got you on our side because of what Jesus did. And we thank you the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We get this opportunity to remember today. We've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We've been made one with you, Father. Raised up and seated together with him in heavenly places. One with him. All through his one sacrifice. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go and take our bread. And after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. We get to have this covenant relationship with you, Father. A covenant, a partnership, an agreement with you. You've made the covenant commitment to do continually good for us all the time. We just thank you for that. So I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. All right, let's talk about some health and fitness stuff. Now, I know if you're new to us here, that might seem weird. We're doing communion and then health and fitness stuff. But I really think physical exercise is meant to be kind of like a parable about how we exercise our faith. Now, something I've seen through the years uh, working as a personal trainer in the gym, having my own gym, is that a lot of people believe that you can't lose body fat and gain muscle at the same time. A lot of people will say you have to do one or the other, but it's simply not true. I've seen it over and over and over again with clients. If you create the right environment, you create the right type of training in the body. You can have amazing transformations where you lose both body fat and gain muscle at the same time. It's possible to do both together. But I hope this is enough for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing, you want to learn more about that, our program, Make Today a Masterpiece. In that program, we talk about the three things we did today, our daily prayer, why we do these daily communion meditations, and then exercising our faith daily, using physical exercise as a way to teach us about that. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. To learn more about that, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.